<laughs> so you took the sandwiches. Chucked Through them. the snow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're done. We're going home and practice. We're not going to eat. That, that hurt that hurt me more than it did them because I love to eat. <laughs> that was Gene Cady, and this is On the Bench with Mike Hall. That's me. Gene Cady is one of the greatest Big Ten basketball coaches of all time. Iconic in West Lafayette, beloved by anyone who has been lucky enough to spend time with him. His success as the Purdue head coach could lead me to making this intro like 11 minutes. But to summarize, he was the head boiler from 1980 till 2005. And in that span, he won six Big Ten titles, a half dozen National Coach of the Year awards, and was named the Big Ten Coach of the Year seven times. No one has more Big Ten Coach of the Year honors than him ever. The court at famed Mackey Arena is named after him. Before Purdue, he was a player in college at Kansas State. Then slowly worked his way up from high school head coach to junior college, then an assistant, then head coach, and then Purdue. Now, after Purdue, he retired, but not really. He spent three years as an analyst with us at the Big Ten Network, where he was an absolute green room storyteller superstar, with most stories containing words that could not be repeated on air. Once he left us, he got back into the coaching game as an assistant under his old protege, Steve Lavin, at St. John's. Personally, I don't know that I've ever met someone so wonderfully surprising as Gene. When I watched him coach when I was a kid, I remembered the sideline scowl he had and his amazing hair, which, yes, was amazing in person too, but I thought he was a grouch. Until we got to work together, and I realized how much of a teddy bear he is. His nickname for me was Miker, Miker, which has to my knowledge, never been a nickname for anyone named Michael ever. I love it. Speaking of surprising, I started my chat with Hall of Famer Gene Cady by asking him to give me the names of the dogs he's had his whole life. My last dog was Queenie. What, what, give me all the dog names. You've had Princess, Queenie. Whippy. <laughs> from the, from the, you remember Popeye had the guy that ate do hot dogs or ate hamburgers? Yep. Whippy. We named him after him. How often are we walking the dog these days? Oh, five, six times a day. It's a lucky dog. Yeah, four blocks a time. <laughs> How, how did you come to all these names? I mean, you're this big, tough guy. How do we have Queenie and, and Abby and Princess and, and Wimpy? I have no clue. I just the way it worked out. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, you know who Mark Monteith is? He wrote my book, Passion Play. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to get him to write another, another book together called Soft Touch. Because I'm a soft touch, and you got to have soft touch in your jumper, and you got to have soft touch on your putting. So... I'm trying to get him to write a book called Soft Touch. That's perfect. And that, that works with, you know, who you are as a person. But it's not, people who don't know you expect you to be a mean guy, Gene. Yeah, but I can see by looking at myself now, I, I'm pitiful. <laughs> I can't help it. No, you're not. No, <laughs> you're not. Does, uh, does Painter have the same type of dog that you have? Has two of them, two boys. We have the female, he has the two males. Fridge and uh, Bentley. Really? That's they, the name of their dogs. Yeah. You get the dogs at the same time? Yeah. Got them. Yes. <laughs> Did you get them from West Lafayette? Yes. Outside of town there. Is that normal for a, two, a coach and a former coach to get the same dog from the same family? Is there anything normal about Matt Painter and me? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, no. I, what was he like as a player? He was great because he was smart and he listened. And uh, I had his dad on my side. <laughs> Wait, how so? Well, he just believed in me. So uh, uh, he was a great player for me because he was smart. I want smart guys that listen. He listened and he tried to execute. I can remember we, play, we were playing at Georgia down in Athens. And all week we've been working on uh, – trying to play smart, you know, do the right, get the right, the ball in the right guy's hands, the best free throw shooter and so on. 
a great, the best three point shooter, whoever should take those shots, trying to play smart before we went to Athens and played. We got down there and we beat them. And uh, they had a great team. I think they were rated, rated in the top 10 in the nation. We beat them at Athens, which was a great win for us. And after the game, Matt Painter came up to me and said, Coach, we finally found a team dumber than us. <laughs> <laughs> and he was right. And he was right. <laughs> I don't know about that, but they were, they were really good. When did, we were, it, when did it dawn on you he'd be a good head coach? I just watching him and listening to him and watching him practice. And, uh, he was always a he was always a team guy. He was uh, always uh, very coachable about togetherness and and uh, taking uh, coaching in the right way. He didn't resent it when you yelled at him, hmm. and that was a lot. Well, you you might have yelled at him a couple times, yeah. Well, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you yelled at everybody, or everybody yelled at him? No, uh, I yelled at everybody. <laughs> yeah, you you got to know that. You know me. <laughs> Well, I know you've been to a bunch of his practices. How is he different from you in the way he runs a practice? Uh, he's very more patient. Uh, probably not, not, not as loud. Uh, probably does a better job teaching. You think so? How does he, how, what makes him a good teacher? More patient. Okay. Um, did you take me back to when he became the head coach? Like, how did, did you have to convince a bunch of folks that he was well, the right Well, uh, Morgan Burke was our athletic director. And uh, when I was going to retire, I, I gave him these names that I thought he would consider. And he finally took Matt Painter. He was a coach at Southern Illinois then. You remember that? Yep. And uh, he, he accepted Matt Painter. So it was because of Morgan, uh, Morgan accepted my recommendation. Hmm. Uh, would you say the best thing Matt does as a head coach is patience, or is there something else he does? Oh, no. He's a, when you've been a player, you understand what it takes uh, as far as uh, playing on the road is hard, and, and uh, you have to be extra well-prepared or well-organized. So he's a well-organized coach that understands how to play right. Yeah. Uh, do you remember when, uh, <laughs> when he almost went to Mizzou? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that was a tough time for Boilermaker fans. Well, it was tough, but they gave him the right amount of money, I guess. <laughs> you know, money talks. And <laughs> I remember once you, I asked you about Bob Knight and the fact that you had a winning record against him. And your response to it is, yeah, but it never gave me a raise. <laughs> no, it didn't. But, uh, <laughs> and it's kind of surprising. I, don't, I didn't know all those things. Yeah. All I wanted to do was win no matter who we played. Somebody asked me one time, who was the tough, where was the toughest place to play in the Big Ten? And I said, wherever you play next. Hmm. You really felt that way? It's a tough league oh, yeah. all around? Oh, yeah. The fans are great in the whole league. We I mean, the best, we have the best fans in the nation in the Big Ten. Yeah. yeah you, especially, at, especially at Mackey Arena. Oh, that building is so loud, especially when the Boilermakers are good, Gene. It's incredible there. Yeah, they were, they're a big edge. Uh, they, they, they're the, one of the reasons we win. Didn't, wasn't the student section when you were there called the gene pool? Yes. <laughs> Did you have anything to do with that? No. <laughs> Did you I'm, like not that, I'm not that original. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go. I want to get to more of you in the coaching, but let's go back to the connection you and I have. The first three years of BTN, you were one of our analysts. Uh, how did that position, how did that opportunity come to you? Well, uh, we had had, uh, I think Steve Lavin had recommended I go there because he was working for ESPN at the time. And I didn't think they would take me because I had no experience at being an analyst or, a, you know, a play-by-play -play guy. I was terrible at play-by-play -play because that takes training. Yeah. And uh, I sat there and expected everybody else to do the talking. So you can't do that. But uh, it would just come about, I think, a lot because of Steve Lavin recommended me to to uh, uh, Delaney when he was a commissioner. So I called up Mr. Delaney and said, I would like to be uh, the analyst. And he said, well, we'll interview you. And I did. And they accepted me. Hmm. Uh, I had fun with you. Did you have fun doing that? Oh, yeah. I love my gig with you guys. Yeah, you, the, you and David. And uh, who's the guy up front I talked to? Quentin. 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 He's the best. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, all of them are great there. I love the Big Ten Network. It's the best gig I ever had. 
It was pretty fun. Except for coaching at Purdue. Right. Yeah, it was it was fun, right? You know, sitting in the green room. Man, you yeah. were you were a wizard in the green room. You were good on air, but in the green room, you <laughs> you would let the four letter words and the colorful stories fly. Yeah, but uh, my mother would not like that, or my wife. So <laughs> we can't let that happen. Well, it never happened on air. We kept you safe on air. No, exactly. It's right. But you, it was literally, Gene. We could just say like, you know. Sterator, go, and you'd have a story on him. Or, or Judd Heathcote, go, and you'd have a story yeah. on him. I mean, you yeah, got Joe, stories on everybody. Judd was my best friend in the Big Ten. Yeah? Yeah, he was a great guy. I miss Judd. What was Izzo, he? Izzo like? was a great guy. Bruce Weber was my assistant. Izzo was Judd's assistant. And we used to run around a lot, you know, at the Final Four. Yeah. And the gigs like that, at golf outing, we always ran around together. So. Izzo is a good friend. Bruce Weber is a good friend. I just enjoy their company. When did it dawn on you that Izzo was going to be as good as he is? I think when he went to the Final Four, first time. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's done okay for himself, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think he'll be, he'll be in the Hall of Fame someday if he's not already. I think he is. What what would be your favorite Izzo story from coaching against him or, or from oh, golfing with him and Judd? Oh boy, I don't I can't, I can't remember. I don't know. They were all good stories. Who's who's the better golfer? You, Heathcote, Weber, or, or uh, Izzo? Uh, me. <laughs> they might not agree with that, but yeah, that's what I that's what I think. Do you remember? Um, and I'm not very good. You're pretty good. You shot your age the other day. Yeah, well, I used to be real good, but now when uh, I went to New York for five years and worked for Steve Lavin at St. John's, I didn't play golf for five years, and that just kills you. Oh. You know, it's muscle memory, and uh, my muscle forgot everything. Yeah. Uh, do you remember a handful of years back, I came down to West Laugh with a bunch of my buddies, and we did this golf outing with you, me, and uh, like six of my close friends. Oh, yeah. That was fun. It was so fun, but... I, I never told you how much I, I kind of screwed you over with that. Why? Because oh, yeah. I, pitched, I pitched to you, hey, can we go golfing? And you said, you bet. Bring anybody you want. So I brought all these guys who were Purdue grads, <laughs> and we rotated them around. And you and I never got to golf together, but all of them got nine holes golfing with you. I forgot about that. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. You, you gave me one of the best bits of advice that I think of all the time, uh, the best short game advice. Your What's that? Is, if you can putt, putt. <laughs> See the ball, hit the ball. That's right. I will still to this day, if it's a 70 yards away, but I can putt, I will putt because it's the Gene Cady rule in my head. I do that too. I, I putt off the, off the green. I do that too. How often? I'm not a very, I'm not a, I'm not a very good chipper. Yeah. You, you are in South Carolina a lot of the time. So how often are you getting out to swing the clubs? Oh, once or twice a week. We live in Myrtle Beach. Yeah. A lot of golf courses around there. There's 100 golf courses around here. <laughs> That's plenty. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a great place to live. We have great neighbors, and I've got good friends down here. It's a great place. You mentioned Lavin earlier. He's a, a great dude, mutual friend for both of us. Is it true? Did I hear him tell me this years ago? that he got on with you because he just wrote you a letter and said, I'd like to be on your staff? Yes. Uh, uh, there was, a, there was a, a guy that was a coach in California that was a good friend of his father, uh, Cap Lavin. Uh, Cap Lavin was the other guard with uh, when, uh, Bill Russell and what was the guard's name? Casey Jones? Yep. Casey Jones and the, and the other guard was Cap Lavin on that San Francisco team. So uh, – I've got to know Cap. He came to our games a lot, and I love being around him because he had a lot of stories. But uh, uh, Steve just wrote me a letter, and I had him come interview, and uh, I took him. That's pretty encouraging. I mean, or, or or Morgan let me take him. <laughs> but like to think that anyone could just say, "I'd like to interview with one of the greatest coaches of all times" in a letter, and it could work. I mean, that's pretty great, Gene. Well, that's nice of you to say that, but. Uh, um, it's one of those things where I, I just liked uh, his background and, and the way he, who brought him up and uh, enjoyed the people he had been around. So I figured he would be loyal, and he was very loyal. Yeah, he's he's a great dude. He was. I'm lucky yeah. to 
still be friends with him. And you he, still, obviously, because he had you at St. John's. What was that whole experience like? Oh, that was great. I love New York City. I love uh, being in Queens. And that's where I met my present wife. Yeah. So, yeah. so, I, so I can blame him for that. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me a hard look on that one. I bet she did. <laughs> there, was, there was one night um, when St. John's was playing DePaul a few years back. And you and Lav invited me to come meet you guys for dinner. And so there were like two long tables somewhere in the Chicagoland area. I don't remember the restaurant. And, and all the players were basically at one. And then like the quote unquote adults were at the other the table. Other. And, and you and I were there and Lav was there. And you guys invited Delaney too. And at like 10 o'clock, all the players left. And by like 11 o'clock, it was basically just the four of us shooting the breeze and telling stories about basketball. And like, it was one of those times, Gene, where I was like, the worst thing I can do is say a word. Because just sitting here and listening to the three of you guys tell basketball stories was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it was fun, yeah. Yeah, I was, I, my, one of my greatest thrills was working at the Big Ten Network. You guys are all fun. Uh, you weren't tied up in yourselves. You, you shared, you were very unselfish. And you had fun telling stories. You're good storytellers, all of you. David was, you were. And uh, just one of those things I enjoyed being part of. Well, we tricked you. We pulled the wool over your eyes, Gene. No, you didn't. <laughs> Did you, that night with Delaney was, was really opening for me because, like, I didn't know how much of a legitimate savant he is with basketball. I mean, he was breaking down teams. He knows the league in that game so well, Gene. Well, you know, he played for Dean Smith in North Carolina. Right, yeah. And uh, he went with us on a trip to Europe. We, when? We, I always like to take teams uh, overseas to play every year. My team, you know, because we always got better. And uh, he was a pain in the fanny. Because <laughs> he knew more than I did <laughs> so, about coaching. So uh, he was a good, good guy. Enjoyed, he and his wife both having them with us. It was fun. Tell me more about this trip. When was it? It was always in the summer. It was yeah. in England. It was in England. And uh, uh, it, was, it was just one of those things. We always try to take our team when they let us every, I think every four or five years you could take your team overseas. And, and Purdue was, uh, 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 was able to let us go. Yeah. And, and he was a pain in the fanny. Was he like telling no, you? No, I'm, like I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. He was, right. he was great. Well, you are always known as one of the, the greats, and, and you coached in this incredible era, Gene. I mean, the 80s and the 90s of Big Ten basketball. I mean, you talked about earlier how the toughest game was wherever you were playing next, but, like, everybody was good back then, Gene. They were. They were. They, and, that's, and that made us better. When you play good competition, you get better. Yeah. What – what was the process like? Like, when did you and Bob Knight officially become rivals? Did it take a year or two, or was it kind of instantly? Well, you know, I was Eddie Sutton's assistant at Arkansas. Right. And uh, Eddie gave me pretty good freedom as, far, as an assistant. And um, I never got a technical on the bench, but I should have probably had some. Yeah. And uh, for the way I talked to the referees. But the referees now are all – they're good friends now So in the Big Ten. I've talked to – once in a while, if I can call Valentine uh, I'll, or Ted Hillary, I'll try to call them and talk. But uh, they're fun. But uh, Eddie had given me uh, good freedom to be part of the Arkansas team as a staff. And Pat Foster was the other assistant. He's a good friend. I talked to him, uh, say, once a month. And uh, uh, one time, Eddie – or uh, Bobby came down and uh, – to fish with Eddie. And that's where I met uh, Bobby Knight when he came to Arkansas to visit Eddie to go fishing. Yeah. And how long into you being the head coach at Purdue did it take before it was clear that there was a bit of a rivalry between the two of you? Uh, the first, first time we played. Why? The, fan, the fans won't let you forget it. You know, the, the IU-Purdue rivalry is one of the best in the country. Oh, yeah. But was it was it instantly a rivalry just because of the incredible rivalry of the schools, or was there quickly something between you and Bob that sort of struck a chord? No, I think between the schools. Okay. Bob's a good friend. I talk to him uh, maybe once a month. I, I, think, I think we're a good friend. He may not think that. <laughs> well, that's the thing that I think would surprise people, is that you two have become pretty close in the last handful of years. 
Yeah, well, we were always pretty close. It's just that uh, we, we wanted to beat each other. Yeah. What, what was he like to coach against? It was hard because they were well coached. Uh, I, I respected him a lot because they graduated their kids yeah. and they played hard. Yeah. If you have those two things, you're, you're worth the money they pay you. You were with him earlier this past year when he made his return to Bloomington. Isn't that right? Yes. Yeah, yes. What was and, that? And, and to the Pacers game. What was that week or weekend like? Well, it was fun because all his players surrounded him and brought him out uh, to see the crowd. That was good. That was very uh, respectful on their part, and I enjoyed that a lot. I like I like respect. I like loyalty. Yeah. And yet you're still friends with me despite that. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> what was what was it like? I mean, that you you're at these two power programs. You're in the heyday of Big Ten basketball. You're in the same state. How often would you get in recruiting battles with Knight for a player? Quite a bit. I never did win many of those. <laughs> How come? Well, Al, Al McGuire told me not to take the Purdue job. He said, "Don't go to Purdue because Bobby Knight is the king there. He, you can't beat him." Really. Yeah, he recommended I not go there. Oh, well. You proved him wrong. Well, you know, you, when I started as a high school coach. If you go from a high school coach to a uh, Big Ten coach, that's a pretty good, pretty good leap. I worked up the hard way. Came from junior college at Hutchison, and then I was a high school coach at Beloit, Kansas, and then Hutchison, Kansas, as a junior college coach. And then I was Eddie's assistant for four years, and I was a head coach at Western Kentucky. So uh, you work up the hard way, and you learn how to coach. You was learn there? How to, especially you got to learn how to win on the road. That's yeah. the key. How do you do that? I mean, is it just from reps and experience? Playing uh, good defense and uh, hard practices, being in condition, great, great condition. We were always in great shape, I thought. Wouldn't you – Tell me if I'm wrong on this, but wouldn't you, like, after a road game, come back and bring the players and be like, fellas, we're practicing until 1 a.m. I don't care. Uh, one time we went to – where was it? Illinois, I think. And, you know, Illinois is not too far from Lafayette. over in Champaign. Great place to go play a game because those, those fans are great, too. Yeah. But uh, they really get after you when you're the opposing coach. That's where it should be. And uh, uh, I think we got beat, like, 30 points over there. <laughs> so uh, we, there's a place on the, on the highway between – maybe you've eaten there before. They're called the Beef House. Okay. And we st I always had them fix sandwiches, and uh, they fixed the sandwiches. I got the sandwiches. We'd gotten beat, and it had just snowed. There was a lot of snow on the ditch, and I just took the sandwiches off, threw them in the snowdrift, and we went home and practiced at 3 in the morning. I, I had a great AD. A lot of athletic directors, George King, would, would let me do that. Uh, it was one of those things – it depends on the athletic director. Yeah. And we'd always win like six or seven in a row after we'd have those practices in the morning. <laughs> so you took the sandwiches, chucked Through them in the snow. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're done. We're going home and practice. We're not going to eat. That, that, hurt, that hurt me more than did them because I love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> did you, and the practices were intense at three in the morning? Oh, yeah. Real intense. Oh, they were. <laughs> on the edge of on the edge of being mean. Yeah. Well, that's not you. You're not a mean guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be a little hard to get away with that nowadays, don't you think? Oh, yeah. It would be. <laughs> for nothing else, for the waste of food. I had a great athletic director in George King. He's very patient. What was the best part? What was the worst part about recruiting? Uh, I never saw a bad part. It was hard because you're trying to sell a great product. Purdue is a great product. You know, it, we got a lot to sell there. If yeah. you get a good education at Purdue, you're going to get a great job eventually. So to get your degree was our goal. That was our main goal, get a good degree. And, of course, win so I can keep my job. But uh, that's <laughs> selfish. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's just – and you had the best – we had the best crowd in the nation. I thought us in the United Center when 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 uh, Michael was at, uh, at the, with the Bulls, we had the best crowd. We had the best most sellouts. We had a sellout at Mackey ten years in a row. So we had a great crowd. We were on TV. So if the, if the parents couldn't get to the game, they could watch us on television. And it, it's just a great place to to coach. Did you ever get to meet Jordan? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I worked in his, I worked in his fantasy camp. He had a fantasy camp in Chicago, and I worked in that. 
That How was, was fun. It? How was he? Yeah, what's he like? He's mean. <laughs> no, he's a good guy. He's fun to be around. Yeah. How so? I mean, he's the greatest of all time, but most of us never had personal interaction with him. Yeah, he just a, he just a great. His greatest thing about him is his competitive spirit. Yeah, he loves to compete. Oh man, you could see that in that documentary yeah. from this past yeah, yeah. spring. I mean, yeah, that was great. Yep, the he, last dance. Yeah, he competed was... throwing quarters in a wall. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, you won so many games, and one of them was your ability to recruit. What do you remember about recruiting Big Dog Glenn Robinson? Well, of course, he was between us and uh, UNLV, Tarkanian. Was the last, he, they were the last competitor. And I think his mother, Glenn's mother, wanted him to go to Purdue because we'd be easier to get to the games. Hmm. So she was a big selling point. She was she, – plus, uh, I was pretty close to his high school coach. Yeah. And, uh, and Glenn was just a good guy. I, enjoyed, I, I talked to him yesterday, in fact. So, oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah. He lives in Atlanta. So uh, – He's just a good guy, and he's a competitor, and I think he likes my competitive spirit. I'm not sure about that, but we got along well. Give him the ball remember, and get out of the way. Do you remember <laughs> what it was like when he officially told you, I'm in, I'm going to Purdue? Well, of course, we were very happy because we thought we could – you know, we, we did win, what, two or three Big Ten championships with him. They were three in a row, I think. Yeah. So, anyway, not, not maybe when he was there. We won three in a row. I remember that. Was he the most talented Boilermaker you had probably? No, no question. He and Sidney Moncrief at uh, Arkansas, the two best oh, yeah. players have ever coached. Hmm. And we've uh, had a lot of – we had 16 guys, you know, make first team all big 10. So, we've had a lot of good players at Purdue. In, in his prime, who wins? Big Dog or Gene Cady in his prime as a player? Oh, that's not even close. He'd kill me. <laughs> me. <laughs> you had some game, though. You were an okay basketball well, player. I, I, yeah, I, I started at uh, Garden City Junior College. We went to the national tournament my sophomore year, so that was cool. Give me the scouting report on you. I, I, I like to shoot jumpers. Yeah. I was a scorer, I thought. <laughs> Sometimes the coach thought I shot too much, especially <laughs> if we got beat, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever dunk? No, I could hardly hit the net. <laughs> You know, you're downplaying your athletic abilities, but you were a really good football player, too. I led in four sports in college. I led in baseball, track, basketball, and, uh, and football. And football. So, yeah, I was a pretty good athlete. I was lucky. And weren't you drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers? Yes, I was. What yeah. was that like? That was fun. The Rooney family are great people. Yeah. yeah. I, love the, I love the Steelers. So, uh Bobby Lane, and I was a pass receiver, so Bobby Lane, Jackie Kemp, and Earl Moore were the four, uh, three quarterbacks, all great quarterbacks. And uh, it was just fun being around those guys. How long were you with the Steelers? About three weeks. My wife was pregnant, so I came home and had a college degree, so I had to get a job. I didn't, I didn't want to take the chance of sticking it out. Buddy uh, Parker was our coach, and he wanted me to come back the next year and try out as a defensive back, but I didn't want to chance that. Wow. Do you think if, if you didn't have the family budding that maybe you could have made it in the NFL? I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, if, if, if they were good enough that they drafted you, you had some potential. Well, yeah, well, I was uh, – I made all big – all big in those days a seven, all big seven as a, a pass receiver yeah. and a running back. But that didn't mean anything. That's water of the bridge. <laughs> uh, one of the cool things that, that I don't think gets brought up when they think about your career is your ability to be a representative for the United States. In the Sydney Olympics in 2000, you were one of the assistants, right. Coaches, right? I was one of the assistants with Tubby Smith and Larry Brown, and I were the assistant. Rudy Tomjanovich was the head coach. That was a great experience. That team was incredible. You had Pippen and Shaq and Kobe and Duncan and Iverson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shaq wasn't on that team. Wasn't he? No, he, could, he didn't want to play. He was a, uh -oh. his dad was a military guy and he, we had to go to Cuba for a USA thing once and play and his dad wouldn't, didn't want to play against communists. So uh -huh. he didn't play, but that's their business. See, I read, thing. I read he didn't want to play because he was scared of Gene Cady. Is that not true? No. <laughs> Why would he be afraid of me? I don't know. You're a tough dude. That's not true. Man. That's not true. <laughs> what do you remember from being on that uh, Olympic team? I remember when we walked in together, but they introduced us that uh, you know how you walk around the track and they introduced all the countries. That was that was wonderful. 
Yeah. And then to win the games and won the gold medal. And Larry Brown and Tubby Smith are still good friends. What uh, what was that you said walking around in the stadium was so cool? Why was that so cool? That's an experience. Just to, that, just you know. to represent your country, you know, you know, walk with the United States because we had the track team with us and all the other sports that were there with us. Yeah. Do you, do you remember what the practices were like with all those superstar players? Uh, it was pretty easy because yeah. when you have great players, practices are usually pretty easy, <laughs> especially if they're good guys and listen. Where's the gold medal now? Well, they gave us, they gave coaches rings. Okay. Yeah. There's my warm up. Nice. <laughs> and my, and a, my blue suede, my blue uh, jacket. We had a white hat and a blue coat. And our, our warm ups were white. It still fits. And she said it still fits. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I buy it. You're the exact same body now that you were 20 years ago, Gene. <laughs> Not quite. There's the Olympic ring they gave us. They didn't give coaches medals, they gave us rings. Look at that. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it is. And the very fact proud that of that. That you said you're going to give that to me one day is just very sweet. You know, you don't have no, to. I didn't. That gene. <laughs> no, I didn't. Listen, you're on record here. You said it. We all heard it. That's perfect. <laughs> you made it up. This is my favorite thing about getting to know you is again, like, you're not supposed to be this nice and friendly. You have the scowl and you're the mean guy. Like, it's so great that that you're such a fun guy because I, I'm sure I'm like a million people who just didn't think you'd be this fun person because of the famous scowl. Yeah, well, I didn't mean anything. I didn't know I looked that way. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> you know, my mother would call me from Sacramento because after they retired from Larned, he was my dad was a florist. She moved out by my my sister in Sacramento, and she would call me and and, and rip me about my language. She said, "Dad's teaching me lip reading. Knock it off." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a great I had a great mom and dad. They were beautiful. Might have been some naughty words. One oh yeah. Two. Yeah. yeah, it was not. It was not. It was not uh, classy. Although, if I'm not mistaken, your mom and dad didn't name Eugene, right? No, that I took the name uh, Eugene and turned it because Eugene means fairy of the flowers. <laughs> and I, I like Gene Krupa. Remember, remember Gene Krupa, the drummer. Okay. And Gene Kelly. There, I worked at a theater when I was in high school, so I saw all the movies and Gene Krupa and Gene Kelly were in a lot of movies and I changed Eugene to Gene. Huh. But I thought I thought your first name was Lloyd. Well it is, but I don't know young I, I want to use Lloyd. You Gene's want, better. You didn't want Eugene, you settled on Gene. Yes. By the way, did you say you worked at a movie theater as a kid? Yes. What'd you do? Swept it out. That's fun. We got in free and we got free popcorn. It's a good gig, my man. Yeah, it was. Well, now we know if, if ever you get bored golfing, you can go work a movie theater. Just perfectly fine. Exactly. I know what to do. Sweep it out. All right, Gene, before we go, we're going to do our final segment, which is called Before You Go. These are four questions that have nothing to do with one another. You ready? Okay. All right, give me an idea of one or two. You sound people. like Johnny Carson. I get that a lot. I did not know that. Uh, give me someone that you haven't met in life that you still want to meet. Hank Void. Hank Void? Yeah. Who's that? Chicago, Chicago PD. <laughs> Wait, he's a police officer? Well, he's, uh, he's a star of Chicago PD. You don't oh, know who Hank actor. Void is? He's <laughs> <No>. an actor. <laughs> and I want to meet Danny on Blue Bloods. And I want to meet Faraday on the <laughs> Golf Channel. Danny from Blue Bloods? Is that a Wahlberg? Yes. OK. Okay. And I want to meet. I want to meet Faraday on the Golf Channel. I think you'd have a good time with David Faraday. Yeah, we probably would. Yeah. That'd be fun. You get into you. All right, I'll call some people. See if we can make that happen. Oh boy. I'm just kidding. I don't know anybody. Uh, <laughs> number two, give me your greatest achievement in your life as a player, not as a coach. Your greatest sports achievement as a player, any sport. Oh wow. I don't know. Uh, um, I hit a lot of, I hit, I hit quite a few homers when I played for K-State, uh, made some touchdowns at K-State. I don't know. I, I just, all my athletic experiences were very, very good and I appreciated them. Yeah. Fair enough. But no, I, had, I had great coaches. No hole in ones for you? 
had one hole in one in Vegas. There we go. Tell me about it. Yeah, Shadow Creek. Yeah, TPC. I mean, I'm not not Shadow Creek. TPC on number twelve. Uh, oh yeah, that's a that's a par five. You got a hole in one or a par five? That's great. No, it was a par three. I'm pretty uh, sure it's par five. Uh, no, I can't hit a ball that far. You know better than that. <laughs> number three. What have you learned about motivating people? Uh, if, you, if you tell the truth, you can motivate them. If, you, if they can trust you, you can motivate them. Uh, one of the things that I learned from Eddie Sutton was he used the word ideal to motivate people uh, and took each letter and it represented a word to make people be more, more successful. Uh, I stood for intelligence, and uh, you got to have intelligence to be successful with common sense. D stands for dedication. If you love uh, what you're doing, you can probably do it a long time. That I love coaching, so I did it at 55 years. E stands for enthusiasm. Uh, you know, without enthusiasm, you can't enjoy life. A stands for ability. you got to have ability to be able to be productive. And L stands for loyalty. I'm big on uh, L, loyalty. Yeah. Why is that one so important to you? I just think that if you work with people and if you're loyal to them, you can be successful. Yeah. Well, it seemed to work for you. Uh, final one, number four. In the history of the Big Ten, has anyone ever had better hair than Gene Cady? No. That's the correct answer. You know who got me to get rid of that was my wife. Yeah, well. Kathleen uh, had me cut it off, and guess what? Underneath there was a cancer. The doctor said in six months, I'd have been bye-bye. Are you kidding? Yeah, so she saved my life. Oh, my gosh. Well, then I would keep her if I was you. I'm going to keep her if she'll let me. <laughs> I think you should. Gene, you're one of my favorite people, man. I always love talking to you. You keep me on my toes. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. I, love, I enjoy the Big Ten Network. Tell everybody hello. I will. I promise. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. So to recap, if you're a legend, you can name your dogs anything, even if it's Princess, Wimpy, or Queenie. He and Bob Knight have become friends now, but those players still don't have their sandwiches from that Illinois game. They're out in the snow still. My thanks to our buddy, the great Gene Cady, for joining me. Heads up, our pal Alex Rue always has great stuff on his Take 10 podcast. Be sure to check that out. But that'll do it for this episode. From the Big Ten Network in Chicago, I'm Mike Hall. We'll see you next week.